He said, forget it. The biggest software company, right? The biggest fruit. Baby hippopotamus. Disaster. Time for me to take a year off so that I'm with kids when she get, gets back to full-time work and I could write the book as well. That is how the two came together. Personal reason and this need to write a book. I was writing from the attic of my house and from the attic, there was a big window. I could see the backyard and in the backyard, I could see the jackfruit, uh-huh. the jackfruit tree. So October, it was a small fruit and I kept on writing and this is right in my line of sight. Can't and by, De- by December 15th, it became baby hippopotamus, <laughs> 15 kg monster. Okay. And you know, that constant focus on something kind of prompted me to look at it more seriously. It's going to fall off. So I'll, I'll, I'll share, you know, a couple of experiences and, you know, uh, what what triggered my focus on that. So first was in New Orleans when I, when I was at Informatica. I took clients for a dinner uh, at the Bourbon Street in, in um, New Orleans. That was over a, over a, a dinner steak at the, at the um, Pado Brands restaurant. And Cajun is, is very popular uh, as a cuisine of New Orleans. So we all went for a Cajun uh, steak, okay, which is which is a, a meat dish. When the chef came and asked me, James, how would you like your, your steak to be? I said, it should be well done. And um, after the chef, she, he asked me, are you sure? I said, yes. And once the chef left, my, my colleague Bennett asked me, James, if my dad was sitting on the table, he would ask you, why would you even eat it? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I didn't understand till till the chef brought the the steak. It was a piece of brick. It was so dry. <laughs> so I had to get extra helping of gravy and mashed potato to make it to soak it so that I can somehow swallow it. Okay. So while taking the mashed potato with extra gravy, I had to keep on keep on asking for more. I started focusing on because my dish was so bad. I started focusing on the mashed potato, mm. and then somehow it occurred to me: Look, what is this mashed potato? It's a glorified cousin of a Kerala dish, which is made of a raw jackfruit. We make a jackfruit mash as a replacement to rice, like the tapioca meal, cooked in steam cooked with coconut and turmeric. And you have it with the side dish, like a gravy uh, side dish. Okay. So I said, this is a glorified cousin of uh, what is known as chakapuruka in Kerala, which is the, the jackfruit meal, or it's like a kichiri, um, uh, similar to the kichiri, or, or I call it between Kichidi and Bengan Bartha. That's mm. the consistency of the, the jackfruit meal of Kerala. Okay. So, uh, but you know, uh, it's just, it just a thought at that moment. Okay, look, this is like that. Nobody ever bothered to promote the jackfruit meal of Kerala like mashed potato being served at a Michelin star restaurant in, in New Orleans, right? Okay. And then I grew up with jackfruit in, in my childhood in Kerala. And in fact, my maternal uncle used to say that if you have a jackfruit tree in your backyard, your life extends by 10 years. And the most popular burger of McDonald's is the beef burger, which is a no-no in India. Right? And McDonald's India adapted to the vegetable burger. And that became the fastest growing burger um, in, in the McDonald's you know, portfolio. Okay. So if McDonald's can do a vegetable burger, why not a jackfruit burger? Mm. <laughs> so I, I took the, the fruit down, half of it I took it home, other half I gave it to the chef. So he kept it in the freezer for some time. Then he called me and said, James, I've made it. You can come and have a try. So we had the burger. It was a tight burger. So in fact, he used the seed crumbs, roasted seed crumbs instead of breadcrumbs. And he made the raw jackfruit cook to a consistency where it is more like meat. And with the seed crumbs, it had a, it had a good nutty uh, uh, feel as well. So it was a tight burger compared to the vegetable burger on, on uh, with McDonald's, uh, which is very mushy. It is very soft because aloo is supposed to. Yeah. to it's okay. This, this is more closer to meat. Okay, so that is where it all started. Going after the 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 jackfruit burger uh, from the underutilized uh, jackfruit of Kerala. Then I found a shrimp burger manufacturer. I went to his house, you know, in, to, to his factory. I saw the entire line. Then I, you know, I walked him through what I want to do with the jackfruit burger. Then he asked me, James, which country are you? going to export this to. And I told him it's for India. He said, forget it. <laughs> I'm not going to touch it. So his rational was, uh, if, if you export this to another country, the cold chain is well established in, in, in the Western world. Okay, we in don't India, have the, any. 
the culture. And he gave me one insight, which may not be true now. He said, look, India, because of the power fluctuation, a lot of uh, freezers work on backup generator. And that is man operated. In the night, when the power goes down, there's nobody to turn on the generator. So the, the temperature inside the freezer goes up. And then next time morning, they'll refreeze it again. So the food gets spoiled and the manufacturer gets the blame. Mm. Okay. So if, if he's worried about, you know, uh, his reputation, I'm more worried about my reputation. So <laughs> I, I dropped the whole idea. So that was a disaster. You know? So I stopped the idea of if jackfruit grows in India, it should be sold in India first rather than exporting to another country. I mean, from a carbon footprint point of view, how do I make sure? Because it's a highly perishable product. Correct. Okay. So I had to increase shelf life without the mess. And that is when I came across freeze drying, okay, as a way to keep it intact, but you can, you don't, you don't need the cold chain. To cut and take jackfruit out, it's a messy affair. Okay? Yeah. It takes 90 minutes and four hands to get from the whole jackfruit to the, the ready-to-cook version of the jackfruit pods or the, or the bulb. Okay, That is how messy the, the, the processing of jackfruit is. Just to give you the math, a 5 kg fruit, if you cut it open, the edible portion is only 1 kg, 1 kilogram. Okay, and within that one kilogram, 80% is water. To 200 gram, anybody with supply chain background would know there is a significant saving. Yeah, if you can build that at the, yeah. at the source itself, and I come from a supply chain background. So to me, that was a significant cost saving in transportation. And I get my shelf life too. So even though freeze drying is the, the most expensive way of um, uh, I mean, preserving food, it made sense for jackfruit because of the 80% biomass waste, which can be removed at the beginning, then another 80% of moisture, which can be removed. And then you get a highly perishable product into one year shelf life. It's like pasta in a pack. You add warm water, within minutes it'll rehydrate, and you can make your burger and you can... Then I took it back to the chef. And he said, it's not just burger, I can make everything with it. Because, you know, I can, I can powder it, I can, you know, rehydrate, uh, to more like a Manjurian, which is Katak. I can uh, rehydrate some more. It becomes uh, more like a, uh, like a mashed potato. I can add this to my lasagna. Uh, so with all this news coverage, what happened was anybody with some knowledge about jackfruit tried to reach out to him. And one of them happened in 2014, uh, April. Okay, a priest came to me. But one night, a month ago, uh, one of my friends who is also a priest came back from Maharashtra to meet me. And he specifically asked for the Kerala jackfruit meal for dinner. And for him, the, the nuns prepared the jackfruit meal and then we both had jackfruit meal for dinner. Then after my friend left, I went to my room, took my normal dose of insulin. And he said, I collapsed right there. He just fell down. I got shit scared. Because I was selling the freeze dried jackfruit online. So I was worried that if somebody takes it and dies, I'm a liable. Mm. Okay, so that is what led to my research on is this good for diabetes, is it bad for diabetes, is it risky? So that is what led to my scientific research. And from there, you know, I moved into a full-time scientific researcher. In June last year, I presented a randomized controlled trial uh, on type 2 diabetes patients using Jackfruit 35. Um, a randomized controlled trial, the way medicine is tested, and proved that three tablespoons of Jackfruit flour per day um, can reduce hp one c in three months. That was accepted at the American Diabetes Association's annual conference in Chicago last year. So when you when you increase your chakka, which is the raw jackfruit, you're actually increasing your vegetable intake and reducing your rice intake, which is what the American Diabetes Association recommended you to do. Reduce rice and wheat, increase salad, or increase greens. So five reasons, 40% low in carbohydrate, 40% low in calorie, 40% low in glycemic load, four times more fiber, and you're replacing a refined carb or a simple grain with a green, a vegetable. Then the priest, now I mean, he's, he's actually now out of insulin completely. Okay, so dramatic results. Okay, then there are two other elements. Diabetes is a major cause. Yeah. Right? So, and wastage of jackfruit is a major farmer's cause. So you have two major costs coming together. Okay, that's the first. So that is why the patient and the farmer, they both has an incentive to promote the story. So in fact, in Amazon, we are the most gifted 
ഗ്രോസറി ഐറ്റം This fantastic, James. We run out of time. I think it's okay. so inspiring as always. Your Thank enthusiasm you so and passion is infectious. What can I say? Thank you. Thank you.